So generally, we like to define disordered eating not as the style of eating, but the mindset behind it. Like people mm-hmm. have a hard time grasping that. But exactly what you said then with orthorexia it would be disordered eating because it is the the mindset and the thought process behind the food choices that really messes you up, which makes almost all of the popular fad diets some form of disordered eating because it's eating out of fear, right? Bringing you a reasoned approach to health and fitness. This is the Fi Life Podcast. Welcome to the Fi Life Podcast. I'm John Barbin. With me is Brad Pilon. And today we're going to talk about probably the most controversial thing, which is just diets, different diet styles. <laughs> so funny. I know, right? <laughs> just as if that's a controversial thing. Yeah. Um, and how people choose to eat and then how they choose to broadcast about what they eat. Um, I it's going to be like Thanksgiving and you'd be like, hey guys, just remember around Thanksgiving dinner, you can talk religion, you can talk politics, just don't bring up Uncle Steve's diet, right? Like can't, yeah, can't talk yeah. about food ever. No, ever. Um, I was listening to, I was listening to a, a podcast with, um, with Paul Saladino. He's, he's, I guess he's the person who first promoted or I guess is the most notable for carnivore maybe. He's a um, carnivore advocate. I like this. Yeah, let's say, say it that way. way. Yeah. It's yeah. Lot, you know, he's really well spoken. He's he knows his stuff with his research. He's you know, he's a good he's a good listen if you've got the effort. Um but I he said something today that just struck me as like how did we get here? And what he said was um well, you know, I actually will have some honey and you know, I drink orange juice so people know that. And he said it like like he was it was like a risky thing to say. No, oh, yeah, that's the equivalent in that world of being like, look, I'm all natural, but I do do a whole bunch of steroids every once in a while to that, right. like, in that equivalent. Right. Like if you like, oh, then you're not that you're not what you say you are. Right. So. I just thought it was absurd that we've gotten to a place where where somebody who you could easily view as an authority, somebody worth listening to if you wanted diet advice or wanted uh, an idea of how to... He's very rational, too. It's not like he's saying he, the way he eats is the only way anyone should eat. It, 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 I'm just using this as an example of how ridiculous things have gotten, where could you imagine telling your mom, he's like, can you believe that that Saladino said he drinks orange juice? Like, can you believe that? Yeah, see, I think you're you're a bit uh, unbiased in this because you're not um, active on the socials the, where these people's tribes develop and, and where mm. they're... So you're kind of... you're. It's weird as it is with your background, but you still have a sort of an outside look into this. You have personalities online. So if you watch... If you listen to Saladino on a podcast, you're like, oh, this guy's pretty pretty bright but if you watch a youtube short of saladino yelling at vegetables in a grocery store with his shirt off you're like this guy's a crazy right and i think that the personas you take on online in order to sell your um brand of eating your influence your popularity etc then always if you do it properly and this is where marketing we should do a whole podcast on marketing but Mm. when you do it properly what you do is you get a group of people who are like i'm totally into what you're doing but in doing so then you get a group of people who are like you're insane and i'm going to prove it on twitter like you you create this divide so then you're no longer um judged on the information you're giving as much as the presentation you're giving it so you have people who are just sitting there waiting for him to slip up and that's why him saying like I once in a while have orange juice was a big deal because people were like, I freaking got him. I'm on it and I'm typing in it. Like, so it was an Mm -hmm. entire ad hominem attack on the, the Saladino that Saladino plays online. Kind of like I'm, I'm a doctor. I play one on TV kind of thing. Right. That Mm -hmm. same idea. Um, And I think that was, is part of how we get there is people just waiting for that slip up. Yeah, that's a that's an indictment on the human race in general that the, that people are want to attack. It's it is well, I I think also, and you and I have talked about this before in again online marketing, is if your stick, your approach is one of attacking and one of pointing out how everyone else is wrong, you gather an audience of I like to call rabid dogs, right? And they're there to watch you attack, and they're there to watch you like rip things apart and be right all the time. So the one minute, the very one minute, the second that you compromise slightly, they turn on you. And we've seen that happen. I mean, these personalities are just rehashed 
personalities that have been online since online existed, right? It's the, the, the hard ass, the everyone's wrong, the foo-foo guru, right? We all sort of have a little bit of that role, but with that hard ass attack type personality, you create a, cra- a rabid fan base that are rabid. So the minute you do something they don't like, they turn on you. And it, you just said a fan base. We're talking about people who give advice on how to eat. And that's oh, and the big weird thing is, it's uh, I'm trying to decide if it's if they're fans of Saladino and Noakes and all the other, um, whether it's keto or carnivore, or all when I mean, we can go into all of them, or if they're fans of the diet and the persona that that diet provides you, right? So, I mean, there's there's nothing more alpha male than to say i only ever eat red meat raw red meat from the the animals i caught with my bare hands in the Mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing and so for you to be like that's who i am i'm more dominant of a man than any or woman than anyone out there i'm I'm dominant and that's my leader and then one day your leader is like yeah every once in a while i have some orange juice and i I really like cupcakes you're like you did you betrayed us you betrayed everything that was our um our persona right so it the orange juice is is an interesting one because it's just that this was a person who moved from the sugar is bad for you kind of keto personality right to a personality of carnivore right so it wasn't just that sugar was bad it's the meat and all that was good and like you you clearly defined which is excellent marketing the good and the evil right? The Sith and the Jedi, the, the GI Joe and the Cobra, whatever the case may be. Right. And then you're like, yeah, but they're all bad, but that one's okay. It's just, it, 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 then the entire very clear black and white of your diet. And, and then thus the personality and the, you know, John Rambo would have been carnivore kind of thing, right? Like that personality. Um, it kind of falls apart because without that black and white good and evil mythos behind it, you're just talking about food again. Yeah. And that, and you just, you just got to all of it. It's people, but it's, it's still, it's based on the audience needing to, to identify with something to like latch onto a concept. And I guess, like you said, if the quote unquote leader sounds compelling enough, they'll wear that idea as an identity. They're like, oh, that's what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not just low carb, I'm carnivore or I'm keto. Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not really a way of eating. It's a, it's an identity. And when the leader of your identity cult, this cult of personality uh, is like, well, yeah, but that's like, I've, I've created this identity that now you've adopted because you can't figure out what to do with yourself. So you're going to follow me and, and you buy wholeheartedly. And now you're like, that's who I am. And then yeah. your leader who's created this identity that you obviously couldn't figure one out for yourself switches a little bit. You're like, Oh wait, but I've, I've just committed to that's who I think I am. And now you're telling me that's not how we're supposed to be. So then I can't be wrong. So you must be wrong. You as the leader who you as the leader who created my identity for me and that I've decided to adopt. So I was never leading this Again, speaking in terms of the person who gets upset with somebody like Saladino or any of these people who, you know, he's just being rational. He's not stupid. Like he's like, there's nothing wrong with drinking orange juice, but that person gets upset because like, well, you created identity I bonded to, and now you've slightly changed that. So I'm upset because that's what I was bonded to. So now you're the, you're the problem, not me, because now I've attached to that. I've attached to that identity and you've taken the, you've basically pulled the rug out from under me. Now, what am I supposed to think? And there's so many carnivore leader. I, I'm, I'm saying carnivore, but I mean, it's just the same with vegan and, and, and any other diet. I mean, I'm sure there's intermittent fasting zealots who just take it to a level that we're not aware of. Right. But mm-hmm. um, in all of them, it, yeah, it's, it's the, the person, it, when, I don't want to use the far left, far right, but you just keep taking something you stream so you can become vegan and then you can become a raw food vegan and then you can just, you just keep going, right? Mm. And then in those communities, the stricture you build rules 
And the more you look down on the other members of your community who don't follow those rules, the more everyone's waiting for you to mess up. And then yeah. when you do, they pounce, right? So um, in the general sense, I don't think that v vegan has that level of cult following um, as carnivore, but I bet you raw vegan does. I bet you that's where you get people who are just more pure than everyone else. And then when they mess up, it's it's probably the same thing. I just don't have a example similar to Paul Saldino, but I know it's actually there was there was a oh there was a a lady and she was a forty bananas a day thing and she was she had a book raw till four. I, I'm really struggling to remember all of it, but I think same thing. I think it was like her whole thing was raw till four, and then every once in a while she was like caught cooking food so, something happened where that community turned on her to the same degree so it is when you get and it's so extreme that the rules built around it are again starting to have nothing to do with diet but um everything to do with to your point the culture the personality around it and think about you said it's their own community attacking them not somebody who not somebody else who mm, doesn't even mm -hmm. believe in that way of eating it's their own people getting irritated because you've switched because they've decided to follow you, right? They've, and again, it's not, I can't stress this enough. It's an identity. That's why they're so triggered by it. It's not that that they've measured something about their body or their blood levels or something's changed. And they're like, and they go, you led me astray. I've been eating something that I've measurably shown, like I, you know, I react to it and it's not healthy for me. No, no. It's like, well, I've, I've adopted this as an identity and now you're switching the identity. So you've flipped their, their sense of themselves on its head. Yeah. Now it's their own fault for not having any sense of themselves to begin with. And, and if this, if this, if you've gotten angry, if you're listening and you've gotten angry with somebody who's been your influencer, your diet person, because they've changed their, their view, especially somebody like you should respect someone who does that based on new evidence. Yes. Right? Especially yeah. based on the evidence. Like Saladino's not dumb. He's like going based on evidence. And he, and he also again I keep talking about him. It's just the it's just the the most example. recent example. Just yeah. in my I was, listen, was listening to this morning. It he's just doing what works for him and some amount of people it might work for them too. But it doesn't mean everyone should do it. So I think the problem is that the rules and borders of a diet sell, right? So I think if if we didn't have eat stop eat as once or twice a week. And 24-ish hours, like if you hit 20, that's cool. But if we were like, it has to be every three days, it has to be 24, we probably would have made a lot more money, but it would have been the same reason, right? People are like, but those are the those are the rules. They say because of the math, it's every three days, but um, every three days is 72, and then that factors in to make it exactly 24, and you can't fast for 24.5, and if you fast for 22, you'll lose all your muscle. You know, like, if you give them those kind of rules, like, they grasp it because then I can do it better than you. Like, I follow the rules better than you do. But by being kind of like wishy-washy is the wrong word, but more realistic about the flow of it all, um, you don't get that level of following tribalism and this is this is where people just don't have the concept of the they're not functioning from first principles they're functioning from rules from uh, tactics nothing to do with like what am i trying to do here anyways like all of it was just to try to well at first all of it was just to lose weight it was to lose weight maybe be healthy if you had a health issue right and then usually that goes to how are we supposed to eat What's the correct way to eat? Then you kind of stumble upon a style and it can be, you know, intermittent fasting, vegan, carnivore, omnivore, Mediterranean. It does, I don't care. And then it is, do you fall under the allure? I don't know if that's the right word of the leaders of that group. And then do you identify with that tribe? And then is that now it's no longer about what you're saying, right? It's, it's something completely different where it's defending the ethos of that diet online all day. Mm -hmm. it's right it's, and 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 did it do anything for you in the first are you even defending something that's worth defending like if you're getting upset with somebody who you started to follow who's changed their opinion again and changed their opinion based on evidence and now you're upset about it were you a were you ever even following the original concept with any vigor or with any 
like, were you really doing it or were you just sort of like the idea of it and like to identify with it? Like how many people who identify as keto actually do it with any, any, any even close to what keto actually is? I'd say most aren't even close. They're probably eating way too much protein, not realizing how much fat has to be present uh, proportionately for it to be truly a, a ketogenic diet. Uh, it's not it's not palatable. I've had a couple friends, uh, specifically one I know, who it was recommended for um, a cancer, a blood based cancer that there, there's not like a tumor where you can cut it out. Like this person has this, this is it. They have this, and one of the ways to manage um, what the cancer does is is a keto diet was a, a potential way to eat. Now, but this wasn't like your weekend keto where. Well, yeah, I'm keto, but like I'll have bread on the weekend and, you know, I'll have some pasta once in a while. And, and well, I mean, I'm, you know, I eat a lot of protein. Like keto is like 80, 90% fat. It's, there's almost no protein. It's not like you just get to crush steaks and chicken all day long. It's, yeah, I think they've redefined it to just basically if I pee on a stick, am I in ketosis or not? Yeah, which most people are never in ketosis. Yeah, but or, he was doing it for light. Yeah. He was doing it for real because of because of cancer yeah and he and he was explaining to me how gross it is how much fat you really have to eat it's not a it's not an enjoyable way to eat it, it's for a clinical purpose now the keto that everyone thinks they're doing is basically just low carb all over it's always low carb all over again they're eating too much protein um it it's there's nothing wrong with it it's just you're you know you're labeling it and it's not it, whatever it is you're doing, isn't really that label, but you, that's the identity you choose to wrap yourself around in. And and same thing with carnivore. Like, is anyone really doing it that intensely? Like, that's an extreme way to eat. It's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just pretty extreme. It, it's very, very extreme. And it's, um, I, I don't, again, then again, so the same thing is that then it starts being, is it just red meat? Is it red meat and eggs? Red meat, eggs, dairy? Like, where... Where mm. is it? And then the problem is why why do you need to define your eating style to begin with? And that's that's the the crux of it, right? So if you're eating paleo or Mediterranean, like it you you definitely have to have a name behind your diet, which is which is very which is a really odd thing. And I wonder I wonder when that started. Like when before before we ever got into this. Yeah. And vegetarians were around for a while and that was their diet based on excluding things. When we first got into this, like Jesus, 30 years ago, I remember like something like Atkins or the zone, this idea no, of like, it was a different guy. Remember oh, I'm blank. I just, I'm with you on it. Uh, I think it was an Italian last name anyway. Yeah. But yeah. the very, very first thought of anything other than, uh, I don't know what a standard balanced diet. This I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. But but when it when there was first like an idea that seemed even kind of radical, even maybe it was it was something between Atkins and Zone where it was like oh you you balance your macronutrients or or, or the idea of low low carb the first time like you took one major macronutrient and you sort of the whole thing was focused around how much of that one macronutrient you ate. So yeah. that that was the first formalized sort of structure of a diet. Now it's again, not talking about bodybuilders who just eat a lot of protein. Like we, we obviously first thing we ever learned was like more protein for muscle, but that yeah. wasn't an identity. That was just something you were, that was like a, a functional thing. It's like, well, you're trying to build muscle, right? You're not yeah. eating enough protein for that. It wasn't, it wasn't like I'm keto. I'm whatever. It's like, no, I'm, I'm leaving gains on the table by not eating enough protein. Yeah. And you started gaming the system. You would like, it was deep Pasquale, maybe anabolic diet. Oh, I got to look at it. It's, oh, it's yeah, probably yeah, back yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. Right. All the right. books. I'll, we should do a tour of the, the books one day. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. And then it was the reason you were cutting fat and or carbs or cycling them or whatever. You're trying to game the system to build more muscle and lose more fat. It wasn't yeah. to have an identity behind it. But you know what? In saying that we both had friends in university who were power lifters who trained at the powerlifting gym you mentioned. Then we'd come to the university gym to train arms so their powerlifting buddies wouldn't see them training arms. So there's a bit of that kind of identity in in training too, right? Like um, mm -hmm. you, you, there's definitely rules of things that are not maybe like frowned upon, right? So 
Um, well, and so, and you brought, that's a good point. You do as everyone around you does. So the idea of sticking to your identified diet, maybe that's more of a, a show that people put on online, I guess. I don't know. But like, if you were out with friends, it's kind of hard. Let's say you go to the bar to watch the game and your friends are, I don't know, ordering chicken wings and it doesn't fit with your diet lifestyle, but these are, yeah. or your diet identity, but these are your, these are your buddies who don't give a crap about that sort of stuff. They're not your, they're not the online tribe that you like secretly talk about, talk with that they don't know yeah. about. You yeah. might just, and let's say the chicken wings are nothing to do with your diet identity, but with them, you're going to kind of feel pressure to just fit in and not push back and say, well, I don't eat that. I eat, I eat something else. And, and bring up to them that they're eating, you know, uh, the wrong way. You're just going to kind of follow along and yeah, just just fit in in the moment because that's what they're doing. How many times in movies is the same scene where everyone's at a bar and everyone's ordering a beer and the pints are flying everywhere and the one guy orders a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, and yeah. that's that's like a movie thing to show he doesn't belong with those those other guys, right, right? Right. So it does. There is, I guess, yeah. Even without the the specific named diets heighten it and make it really obvious but outside of that there is specific ways to eat to f it is still tribal right so um again that situation you you would order a beer with the rest of the guys you wouldn't order a chardonnay even if you really really wanted a chardonnay you would probably buckle and and go along right so uh i mean it's probably really obvious with like high school kids that something watches like if they're all going out for burgers or something like that but we do want to desperately fit in and it's really weird yeah now that you bring it up the way we eat is a way to fit in yeah well i mean food is you know it's a bonding experience you know you break bread with people you every celebration's based around food like imagine having a wedding where there's no meal or like there's you know like everyone's coming over for thanksgiving but you don't eat we can do like okay do you know um it's a it's a reddit thing and it's a a t a am i the asshole right mm. and it's, so you, you're asking you're like this happened and i don't think i was the bad guy i think this other person was bad mm. and to give you an interesting example and we learned this with fasting a while ago right so proper etiquette with fasting is you don't go to a dinner when everyone's fasting, when everyone's eating and then order a Diet Coke and sit there because you're fasting. I've done it and it's pompous and it's weird, right? So don't, don't do it. But in this situation, dude is going on a date, a first date with this girl. And he, you know, he worked late, had a really long day, got to there. Now, dinner reservations weren't until 8. So she was coming for 8. But he was figured, I'll just get there early. So he got there around 7.30. But then, because he said he wanted to scope the place out and find the right uh, table and all that. But then he got hungry, so he ordered dinner. And then he ate. So then when she got there, then he was like, yeah, I'll just have a cocktail. And she's like, in, you know. Oh, no, oh, no. Dude, you, can know. <laughs> you can <laughs> never. You can never. You're asshole for sure, right? Oh, <laughs> like massive, massive, enormous, gaping asshole. You cannot, you can never sit without food in front of a girl who's, no woman wants to be eating by herself no in front of a man. No either. Yeah. Well, but like even, wor it, even okay. worse. Even worse a date. Yeah. Even worse. On a date. Is this his first date with her? Yeah, it was the first date. What an idiot. Uh, no, idiot. You, <laughs> even even like your spouse or your significant other doesn't feel great in public with a bunch of food in front of her. This, again, speaking from a guy's perspective, while you're not eating anymore. No, Heather it, would beat me. It would be, yeah, it'd be horrible. Well, she's just, she's going to feel like, like, oh God, am I the one just crushing the food while he's sitting? Yeah. Like it just, what and an idiot. And then even worse because then she finds out that like, no, he actually did eat a massive meal. He's ate before her. Like, so, but it goes to show there are cultural rules around food. And mm. then because our cultures are, are broken down to online tribes, then I, I think, so it, it makes sense why this happens, but I think the crux of it is your point, which is you followed a diet originally either to lose weight, most likely, to fix a health problem, that's your second choice. Or the third is, you know, that definitely if longevity, right? Is like, if I, I want to eat the right mm -hmm. way now, mm -hmm. so I don't have the issues my parents had or something like that. So at some point, you, you switch from that to defending this, you know, you're literally wearing 
I don't know if there's carnivore shirts, but you you'd wear one if they existed, right? Or vegan. Well, dude, we the vegan community we have like vegan bumper stickers, which is a great way to get your car keyed. But yeah, like you, no kidding. That's man. how big you identify with this stuff, right? So I wonder. I wonder if the huge culture shift now is like I'm an omnivore, and it's like I. You know what I mean? Like it's the it's so normal now. It's it's the weird thing because yeah. it's not it's not weird. So like you you're vegan. I don't even know how many people would know that. I mean, I guess I guess people who f- follow your stuff know that. We bring it up. But, no, it gets up brought up rarely. Yeah. But you're the least. This is gonna sound weird. You're the least vegan vegan there is. Like it's not. I an started idea. off really pompous, so veganism didn't make me more pompous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It didn't yeah. budge the needle. But yeah, yeah, you just you just your reasoning is so. I don't know, benign that I'm sure there's an entire ex- a wing of the vegan community that rejects you because you're not like idealistic enough. Oh, probably. Because when you actually admit it's a personal choice, well, there's no reason to talk about it. Oh, that's right? a super so, good point. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. You're not, you know, you don't want to be part of the tribe. You're just doing it for your own reasons. And then yeah. it'll ir- ir- irritate them that you're also wearing the same, I don't know, garb, but not. You're not part of the group, but you're wearing yeah. you're wearing the uniform, but you're not on the team. Yeah, and it's well, and I'm also a massive hypocrite because if you think about so, based on my background in nutrition and then our grad work nutrition and all the work we've done, to me the the probably the ideal human diet, if you actually wanted to design it, would be like a frugivore scavenger, right? Mm. So the idea behind. Um, 25 million years of evolution would be based on our tropical living, eating tropical f- plants. We're tricolored, so we're a trichromatic vision. We're really good at picking out berries and bright mm-hmm. fruit. So there's all your fruit. But then we were also really smart opportunists. So if we could chase those hyenas away, we could eat whatever that was left there. And mm-hmm. then we probably learn how to hunt stuff. So that that makes sense. And I'm like, yeah, so this is exactly how we should eat. They're like, is that how you eat? I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I don't eat meat. Right? So, yeah, you're kind of best. admitting yeah that you're like yeah. I, I think we can use the current technology admitting that you know 25 millions yeah we're not even talking like humans right we're talking like humanoid primates but Whatever. they probably didn't have vegan protein powder so it wasn't really an option right, right so right. and they couldn't drive to a store to get it uh, so I, I think there is an ideal diet um if you want to go on the whole idea of uh, how we were designed to eat after all the, the we're designed a certain way but then at the same time realize that you know the when we moved north and we started having to hunt because that was all that was there uh mm-hmm. that that wasn't really high fat we chased those animals down right mm-hmm. they, they were leaner mm-hmm. than and they weren't cows right so um th- and then the fruit we ate even 10, you know, millions of years before that was much more fibrous and probably slightly higher in protein. But mm-hmm. it doesn't negate the facts that there's foods available now that are relatively similar. So you you have an ideal diet, but I don't think that matters. I don't – if the ideal diet was, you know, by being a frugivore, because remember that includes the f- vegetables that are fruits, and then mm-hmm. it's like starches, seeds, nuts, and some meat, you're basically saying – Frugivore scavengers are a really, really cool way to say omnivore, who occasionally eats larger amounts of protein. Right? Yeah. Boring. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 so boring. So it's, well, it's not want... it's not an identity. It's not an identity. It's just a collection yeah. of food, and that's all food has ever been, and it's all it'll ever ever will be. If you're caught up in your i your diet identity, you got like a lot of work to do. I'm probably yeah, we just I'm probably pissing off a lot of people, but it yeah. isn't an identity. It's just food. Yeah. So we ended eat stop eat with a zen cohen and it was talking about we, we we reworded it and we basically said that you know before you study nutrition so when you're an eight-year-old right food is food and drinks is drinks right you just it's just that's what it is and then you dive deep into it because you just decide for some whatever crazy reason you want to do a degree in nutrition and then food is no longer food it is like it's amino acids it's vitamins it's minerals it's it's fiber and you just keep diving deeper and now it's essential amino acids and non-essential amino and it's a different types of fibers and you're even deeper and now you're counting carbon links to the fats and then you deep enough you're like oh it's it's just food mm-hmm. and you come all the way back out the other side and you look at people arguing over it and you're like you're you're doing the equivalent of arguing over paint colors in a house, right? Like it's, you've got a personal preference, but I, I, Mm. you know, and and maybe, maybe there's some foof, not foo-foo, but like light science on certain colors eliciting certain 
emotions and then there's probably um some idea of certain colors and certain luck or something but like in the end it's probably not worth arguing and losing friends over but mm-hmm. diet's something that you can argue and lose friends over so it's yep. yeah it's really it, it's odd it's, that way it's it's ridiculous that 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 is something that you could get to the point where you're divided amongst people and again, again, this is an ideology people talk about. They don't even practice. I guarantee half the people arguing about that stuff don't actually do it. They or not to the degree where if you followed the rules of that tribe, they were even really doing yeah. it that well. They're probably they're 99 percenters to get most of it. Right. 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 But they're then the that one percent could yeah. banish you. Yeah. <clears throat> right. But but then they're going to hold on to it. Yet they're not even they're not even doing it strictly. I don't know. It's like there's got to be some cognitive dissonance in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to to your point, starts off as food. It gets ridiculous the further down the rabbit hole you go. And to me, the final answer is to get back out of it and it's food again. And that's I mean, it doesn't mean you can't pay attention to certain things. You don't need to be asleep at the wheel. If there is something that doesn't agree with your system, it's worth oh, yeah worth exploring to see if you can handle x y or z item but you that's like a that doesn't fit into nicely into any one package that's kind of whatever's working on your body so yeah. do you remember restrained eating it was restrained eating we talked about right oh yeah 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 and and we we really dug in a lot of that research was i think u of t toronto and one of the interesting things about restrained eating is that the idea was you would follow a diet a pattern and when you would ultimately fail at it, mm-hmm. the solution was stricter, stricter rules, stricter guidelines. And so you feel like these are all just a culmination of decades of restrained eating where people are like, okay, so the only possible way I can do this is if I only eat steak, right? Like it's, it, it, it almost is that same idea where the failures of the diet is what creates the strictness of the diet. Be like, well, you didn't do it hard enough. Yeah, kind of double down and yeah. double down. Yeah, double so for down. people, who, yeah. for yeah, we might as well define restrained eating. It's basically yeah, yeah. the concept of identifying foods or entire categories of foods as good or bad, and you label that for yourself, and then you restrict it from yourself. So not necessarily restricting total amount of food eaten, but categories. So um, carbohydrates are bad, sugar is bad. So, like something, something that in your mind, like that's off limits. That's across. Uh, the border and if you if you hold on to this concept and and you cross that line which everyone will eventually cross the line um you view that as a failure you failed on your rules and the day or the moment you cross the line you know there's guilt associated with it but normally that leaves leads to kind of like a binge like well i screwed it up today anyways i might as well go all out i'll i'll and then tomorrow I'll reset. I'm sure everyone, this is familiar. Um, yeah. If you if you put like I don't know, let's say you put uh, you know pizza and chocolate on your bad food can't have it list, and then you have a couple bites of pizza one day, and you're like, ah, forget it. I'll just eat the whole pizza, and then I'll I'll reset tomorrow. That's yeah. a, that's that like all in binge reaction is a response to having it in your mind that even that first bite was not. Like that was all restricted. It was, it was all bad. off limits. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad, 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 evil. The response to that is I messed up. Okay. Now it's just not no pizza, no bread. The bread was the problem. That's right, what drove right. me to eat the pizza. Yeah. Right, so right. in, I think it's Taoism. It, it might be Zen. And I think it's Shifi. I forget, but basically they go really deep into the idea that good and bad, that distinction is a, a major fault in human thinking and that we use it at a young age, right? That's a bad person. That's a good person. That was a good thing you did, a bad thing you did. Right back to what we were talking about, right? Like the movies, are, you're the Jedi and the Sith, the Autobots, the Decepticons. Like you, they're just one or just evil. Like, And mm-hmm. they're um, in a movie, they're, uh, the reason for doing things is simply like because we're evil. Right, like it's like why you want to uh, just evil. Not that they're looking out for their family, and I'm looking out for my family, or we, we're disagreeing on a border. It's like no, they're evil, and we're the good guys. And it to take that to exercise and food is such an interesting concept, right? That we can't, we have to break them down into categories of good and bad foods, good and bad carbs, good and bad proteins, right? And it's it's a phenomenon that's really interesting because it rarely do things work out that way. Right, mm-hmm. like rarely is something ever purely good or purely bad. Even something that happens to you in life, and you're like, "Oh, well, if I didn't, if I didn't 
break my arm, I never would have learned how to play the piano with my left hand. And now I'm a, you know, I get, you, yeah. you can't really tell what's going to happen into the future. So the, this whole idea of breaking things up good versus bad is what causes, again, restrained eating, like you said, and these diet tribes, because something bad had to have caused me to look the way I don't like or feel the way I don't want to feel. And therefore something good must be able to fix it. Yeah. And, and there's no end to the bad food list. I guarantee you can no. eventually put every single food that exists from one, from one construct or another, from one diet concept or another, every single food you encounter could be labeled oh, bad. Yeah. Right. If we didn't love the look of muscle so much, protein would have served its time, but it's, we're still yep. in love with the look of muscle. So it's been carbs, fat, and then food products just they all just fall in whatever category you want right and but now it's the source of protein and then is it gmo yeah. and then is the meat like is it free if the animals are free range do they grass have fed, grass finished baby grass fed grass <laughs> finished is it yeah. but it it says it's free range but they really get to go outside and is it local or not like does it how far yeah. away are they from where you know but is it whatever it is farm to table did you or did you not sing to the bees at night before you made the honey <laughs> um what about your vegetables? Where are they grown? Like, what is their pesticides? Like, is it GMO? Like, it's you could just go down on and on and on until there's nothing left to eat. Now, this is a thing. I don't know if it's been formally adopted yet. Orthorexia, people who have a um, an unhealthy obsession with health food. How old is that book? It's been around for a while. It's been around for a while, and and, it, and there's been a whole documentary on it, which was pretty good. But it, it's clear that people can convince themselves there's so many bad foods there's nothing left to eat and they actually have a visceral response to eating eating or even thinking of eating something that they've themselves have labeled as bad there's actually nothing physiologically wrong with it if they ate it but they've convinced themselves there will be and so they just their bad food list just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the list of things they've convinced themselves are acceptable to eat and some of these people are wasting away and gonna die because they've they can't find something they can eat that they've agreed psychologically with themselves yeah. that's worth eating. Do you remember his story is really actually, cause we, we talked about Zen and stuff earlier. His book was interesting because I think he, he started off disgusting himself cause he was just eating like hearty man soups in a can or something. And then he would try to get healthy. That took him down this whole rabbit hole of orthorexia. Then he eventually like travels the world and meets like a, a Buddhist monk or something. He's like, what do you eat? And he's like, well, dude, have you tried the hearty man soups are great. <laughs> and so it like yeah. came all the way back around. Yeah, right, right, right. So, but yeah, it, it, the, the idea of, um, obsessively obsessively obsessing over health food being a true eating disorder is very interesting The eating disorder is an interesting area i don't really want to dive into because you could just anything is disordered because then you could make the argument the standard way of eating is disordered based on the outcome of obesity right so generally we like to define disordered eating not as the style of eating but the mindset behind it and i People mm -hmm. have a hard time grasping that. But exactly what you said then with orthorexia it would be disordered eating because it is the the mindset and the thought process behind the food choices that really messes you up, which makes almost all of the popular fad diets some form of disordered eating because it's eating out of fear, right? Yeah. I, well, again, and none of this, um, you'd be shocked at how little everyone else cares about you in general. And let alone how you eat <laughs> and let alone how you, no one cares. Yeah. Like just nobody cares. Like if you really took it, put it this way, especially when it comes to diet and exercise and how you choose to, I don't know, work out and eat to influence your body. If you choose to at all, do you know how few people care? Even yeah. like from my experience, even people's own spouses don't care. If anything, they get irritated if you bother doing anything other than just doing what they're doing. Yeah. So the minute the like, it just, it's just, it's just for you. So, and the idea of getting, getting that obsessed about us again, it's, it's all outcome based. You know, what's funny is I'm trying to think when, like when I go away on vacation, right. And then someone asks me based on the way I look, I think it's more often or not how often do you work out? How do you work out? than it is what do you eat. Do you like hmm. what? I wonder, like it would, we have to see what anybody else thinks, People but don't, yeah. well, maybe it's cause it's not polite to ask that one, but yeah. Yeah. It's almost like politics, the eating thing, but, but people seem to want to broadcast it online for some reason, but 
I, you know what? I guess there's more of a link to if you seem to have any any muscle or any shape, people. Well, that's got to have something to do with working out. But, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But but I mean, I guess I don't know if people. Let's say someone saw you frequently enough to see you lose weight, they might be like, "Oh, how did you do that?" Like right. maybe assuming that has something to do with diet. What did you change? Yeah. Yeah. If you're gaining weight, no one's like, "Oh, what do you eat?" Let me. I'm gonna write all this down. Yeah. Like no one, no one wants to know that. But again, it's all outcome based. Like if if someone's so obsessed about their diet that they uh, unhealthy obsession with health food and they're eating less and less food and they're losing weight and becoming what otherwise you could measure as maybe unhealthy. It no one cares. It's like, oh, it's happening to you. It's you know if you don't care, why the hell would I care? Like, yeah. why would anyone else care if you don't even care? And it, so it's, do you want, do you think your body's headed in a direction, whatever direction you think you're headed? Like, if you can't tell that what you're doing isn't moving you in the direction you think you want to be moving, you got a problem. Like, if you think being this obsessed with health food yeah, okay, yeah. is actually making you objectively healthier. And again, this is all, I think it's. It's kind of is subjective, but let whatever you think your health measurements are improving and they're not, and you can't see that, like, that's the problem. Like I would say that's a problem because you can't even tell what's going on. Like you don't, you can't even see what you're doing is doing the opposite of what you want it to do. Yeah. So, and that's what I think an orthorexic is happening with them is they think they're improving, but things are actually getting worse. You know, it's a hard part about that too. Is it just from a, a physique point of view? Like it changes so slowly, like really. And, but so even though muscle, I mean, even on a new workout, you should probably give yourself 10 weeks on that to decide if it's actually building anything noticeable. But within the first week or two, you're going to have days where you feel bigger or smaller muscle wise. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with diets, right? You, you and I have talked about how you can, can with our DEXs continually lose body fat. And it's like, you, there wasn't really a difference between 14% and 13% and 13% and 12%. And like, why am I even doing this? And all of a sudden you go from 12 to 11. You're like, Oh, Hey, mm -hmm. right. So you, depending on when that fought, if that happened to be when I changed something in my diet that week, I might be like, Oh, it was the orange juice. Right. <laughs> like it's so, yeah. so that makes it really difficult. If you're just tracking, if your metrics, because most people don't go to a lab, their metric is the mirror. Right. So if your if your only metric is a scale and a mirror, then it's it's very easy to think you're causing changes that maybe yeah. you're not, and then you core and then you need to create some sort of causal link. So it's is it the workouts, the walking, the lack of stress, or the fact that I only eat red food now? Like, I, I to me, it's just a cause and effect thing. Like with your diet, like it just I don't have any rule I follow like oh I have to eat this or a uh, eating pattern or any of that stuff like there's general things you can try the thing is you don't even know until you try like you can you can try fasting maybe it just doesn't agree with you sometimes yeah. it will sometimes it won't um also depends like how you're training and even what your body fat level is if you can even handle certain styles of eating yeah. better than not and you know add a food in take a food out change a pattern is it, is any of it getting you anywhere? Do you even have a goal? Like, and do you, can you even measure it? And if, and if you have uh, some kind of goal and you have a way to measure it, that's at least where you start. And then is, is some diet intervention you're making moving you closer to that goal or further away or just kind of not doing anything? Yeah, that's a good point. We're not against diet interventions and we're not against changing how you eat or even watching how you eat. I think the issue we're talking about is then finding a approximate group of people who eat similar to this new thing you're trying out and then identifying and signing up and being a member of their tribe. That's, mm -hmm. that's the issue we're talking about. And then having that tribe tell you which foods are good, which foods are bad. And then the orthorexia that comes from, oh my God, I ate a bad, I had some honey. Right. So, right. but in terms of finding the right foods that make you feel good, that's great to do that. Um, do you have to label it and, and broadcast it to everyone? You can tell the people who are interested in what you're doing, but I don't know if shouting at everyone who's not doing that is the right call. I think part of it is rooted in people trying to manipulate their body with their diet and failing so a lot of this is rooted in trying to look better and trying to get quote unquote in shape and which is yeah, usually rooted obviously. in losing body fat so yeah. so if you you try various diet styles and none of them actually produce the results you're hoping for which is a reduction in body fat 
but you still struggle with or put the quote unquote effort into that diet style, then you just adopt it as like all of its other reasons, the identity, the ideology, yeah. what it means, like, you know, but, but in the end it's like, would you adopt that for? Were you trying to lose weight? You haven't lost any weight. Clearly that diet doesn't do anything. Either that or you've been, or you're focusing on the wrong thing all along. Like if you yeah. don't eat less total calories and you, it doesn't matter what diet style you're following. Or let's say it the other way around. If you're eating in a caloric excess, it doesn't matter which, all, all of them are going to fail. You can't overeat your way to weight loss, no matter what diet you're on. So it, like you're missing the yeah. point of what you're, you're missing the most effective part of what would have driven you to your goal in the first place. So now you're completely focusing on the wrong thing. And that's where maybe some of these, I don't know why, but they'll double down on it and start defending the ideology versus like, oh, I just kind of, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I was carnivore, I was whatever, but I was actually eating 3,500 calories a day. Like, what, what was I doing? I was just, wasn't. I'm not going to lose weight I actually wonder like if it's the ones who don't get the results claimed are the ones that then double down the most and become the most um, intense about it because you have that conflict, right? I'm not getting the results. I need to like really clean it up. I need to do it really hard. And then almost that's why it would make you mad when someone's doing something similar to you but is on a looser group of guidelines as opposed to rules. You're like, well, then you're cheating, right? What's the result claimed for any of these? No, it's dude. It's it's muscle weight loss, perfect health, and live to three hundred. They're all the. I mean, we're all yeah. the same that way, right? So, um, I I don't think there's a a really popular diet out there. It's like, yeah, like you're not gonna lose fat. In fact, you might lose some muscle, but you're gonna make it to a hundred. Like, fix one one thing. I think most of them in general are the panacea of all three, right? So, yeah, I think I think there's this assumption that there's this if you um land on the exact right mix there's this perfect state of being which like doesn't exist but they think there is and you search for it like oh i was i was keto no it was actually carnivore no it was actually paleo like oh fi i finally found the one this is the one first of all there is no one for everybody some somebody might be highly reactive to what otherwise would be deemed a healthy food like a certain like a vegetable, like you can totally react to a vegetable. You can oh, be absolutely. allergic. You can be allergic to something that somebody else finds as the staple base of their diet. Yeah. So who, so for you, it's that thing's not good. Like I know no. a guy, I worked with a guy who was, had an anaphylactic reaction to the seeds of a kiwi fruit. Now, he didn't know that till the day he ate a kiwi fruit and he almost wow. died. Wow. Now, obviously, and then he almost died. He was a kid. I don't know how old he was, but. But how would you know that? Like yeah. most people are like, ah, kiwi, fine for him. No, kiwi could kill me. So probably yeah. not going to eat those. And some people have various rheumatoid conditions that are exacerbated by various vegetable, like a vegetable causing a rheumatoid yeah. reaction. Like the nightshades, they, right? I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know if it's specific to just nightshades, but some people just can't have it. Celiac disease. Yeah. Some people, but not everyone. Yeah. Um, some people... There is a condition where you could actually be allergic to red meat and it's yeah. violent. It's violent. And once you, apparently once you, I don't know if it's viral based, but once no, you it have it, it's based. Oh, it's a t Yeah. It's something yeah. It's you pick it up, it's a parasite or something. And once, once it's present, I don't think there's any way out of it. Yeah. I think a large part of the diet dogma though, is just being right and more right than other people. Like I'm right. You're wrong. I'm therefore I'm better. I'm there's somewhere. I'm better than you. I'm, I'm pure, cleaner, better. I'm better at this. Like, I think there's a bit of a competition base behind it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Lone Star tick. Yeah. So, um, oh, I hate ticks so much. Yeah. But anyway, so these are all examples of your ideology will be completely deconstructed with the, the truth of the matter. And this is the truth always comes down to cause and effect. I ate something, something happened. The ideology is out the window now. Tribe is out the window now. You can't have ideology in, in science because science no. is allowed to be proven something that was really really right can be proven wrong and you have to be like oh now i have to move on right and but i base my whole being on this so i think you need to keep a level of relaxation about it all because it can if you're 
deciding that something is your tribe based on science supporting it really, really strongly, then the problem is science is pretty fickle that way too, right? It can support something really strongly until they find a new way to measure something. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's maybe not what we want to do, right? So for instance, coffee, right? You can just say, I like coffee, love the taste of it, love the way it makes you feel. And then you can do that for, so I can come out and be like, but John, five new papers show that coffee takes a year off your life. And you can be like, I never said it made me live longer. I said, I liked it. And you're allowed mm. to just like things and you don't need 30 scientific references to explain why you like something. You can just be like, not nah, taste great to me. Right. So, um, like I, I love Guinness. If I'm going to drink a beer, it's going to be a Guinness. It's really mm. hard to explain to people that it's not people like, Oh, because it's better for you. I'm like, no, it's just, I don't like the taste of other beer. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's, it's just the one I can tolerate the most kind of thing when it comes to beer. What, so um, yeah, it's not me going like, actually the recent research on Guinness show is none of that. It's like, I don't, I like bitter. Like I like espresso. I like Guinness. That's the flavors I go for. Right. So, and we're not talking about being, I was just about to say being irresponsible. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's up to you to decide what you're going to do with your own body. But you're allowed um, to do it just because you want to, not because yes, of the 300 yes. scientific references and the one guy on Instagram you like. One of my favorite things to do is there's a diner here. It's called it's called Night and Day. And it's this tiny little place that only has like, it's maybe only like, I don't know, not even 10 feet wide. And it's got like a maybe 10 or 12 seats inside. And it's the best breakfast joint on the island. In, and I don't go there often, maybe once every couple of a weeks, but on the weekend, it's my single favorite thing. A uh, single favorite eating event is sitting there yeah. in the morning with with a coffee and just bullshitting with whoever comes in, and everyone just sort of whatever. We just you just chat, and it's just utter chaos because they're they're cooking so much food. And the pancakes, I get a pancake. It's like the size of a frisbee. I can't actually eat the whole thing. I get maybe halfway through it. That's awesome. And and uh, and so, and so, yeah, I know, right? And then some <laughs> kind of omelet thing is yeah. usually what I get. And that's like my single most enjoyable eating event of anything. And I understand if I did that every single day, I'd probably gain like a lot of weight. It'd be hard to control it, but I'm never going to stop going there. Like that's my yeah. most enjoyable eating event. And it, and I kind of pick and choose when I, but it's like, it's just the whole experience. It's not just the food, the whole experience. Like I cannot possibly recreate that anywhere. They have tables outside it's not as much fun as being inside yeah, yeah. because when you're inside, you can like jaw with the cooks and stuff. And I all know them now. They even keep like um, a container of maple syrup there just for me. It's got my name on it. It says do not touch that's because they, because, well, cause they don't so maple syrup super expensive in most places. Don't really. Well, yes, it's mega expensive. Well, mo most, most places here don't have it. Or if they do, it's, you have to pay for the maple syrup and they bring I it out and like tap the trees out there. I just, the last time I tried to make maple syrup, I almost burnt the house down. So. It's mega expensive. There's even a black market for maple syrup. Anyways. Oh yeah. I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It got stolen. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, up some places have it. Uh, uh, you have to request it. Otherwise the standard table syrup is like high fructose stuff. And I, I don't oh, know. It's just, yeah, the but, but syrup. it doesn't have that smell and that flavor, right? Like the maple right. syrup. So anyways, I'm like, Hey, do you guys mind if I like keep, like some maple syrup here for me. And they're like, yeah, no problem. So I'm like, so behind the counter is my bottle of maple syrup. And when I come Love in, it. she knows to bring me out like some, and, and every now and then I meet somebody who's kind of cool. And I tell him like, that guy's allowed to have maple syrup now too, <laughs> like out of, out of my bottle. Right. Anyways. Yeah. But this is like my favorite eating event. I understand yeah. that, the, that eating a Frisbee sized pancake and an omelet, like in an omelet with like Jack cheddar cheese and, and, yeah. you know, bacon, and everything in it. I understand that's my, basically my calories for the day, right? That's like, it's a, it's, it's the yeah. most enjoyable meal, but it's, I, I, I understand for my goal, for my personal goal to try to maintain my body shape. I can't do that too often, but right. I'm never, I'm never giving it up. Like I'm never giving no. that up. You have to take and a nap so, after that for sure. Right. Whatever. Anyways, the point is, the point is like, this is, it's just, it's, uh, all your food experiences matter and it, it's all based on your goal. If I didn't care about what it might do. And again, might, these are all probabilities. Yeah. I know for sure if I eat that way, I'm probably going to gain weight because it'd be too hard for me to control the rest of my calories throughout the day. Right, right. Like that one meal won't cause me to gain weight. I just know that for the rest of the day, I'll be so limited with what else I could eat. And that like, over time, I'd probably start gaining. So I kind of like, eh, okay, there's only so many times I can go there and stay within my general goal response. But if you want to eat there every day, cause it, you, it's just your favorite thing, knock yourself out. Doesn't, if you don't care, 
like what it does to your body or you have more control than I do. There's nothing wrong with that. Just do, do, do whatever works for you. I have, I always had this thought with all of these like diet styles that have evolved and these try, do, do these people think no one before them who never had this diet, never was healthy, never had a long life and never lost weight. Like do every, does everyone think if you go 50 years back, no one's ever lost weight. Because, well, they yeah. didn't know about keto. They didn't know about paleo. They didn't know about carnivore. Like, really? Do you think, do you think that's true? Do you think the very first person who ever was successful or the very first person who was like measurably healthy was the first group of people who adopted whatever diet you're following right now? Yeah, it's good. Point. Like, good point. like, no, no one thinks, no one thinks in those terms, but yes, obviously people have lost weight before this generation and they didn't have any special diet rule tribe that they're that you're currently following now it was just i don't know they figured it out and it was probably just eat a little bit less of everything that they're already eating so it's i mean i get you just have to have so much cognitive dissonance to buy into one of these like hardcore styles and just just blank out the concept that anything could have ever worked for anyone who lived before you yeah it's it is the tribalism of diet is, I mean, we could go on forever on it, but it's, mm. it is fascinating, right? Because that is what it ends up being is just trying to find a way to belong. And it, I would wonder if it would exist the same way without the online world, if it's just a way to connect with people over diet, right? So, But is, is it, I mean, I guess it's a way to connect, but it seems like such an adversarial way to connect. It just seems to cause more. It's an us versus them for sure. Right. And I... Uh... I guess people are tribal, right? I mean, we're seeing mm-hmm. that, you know, at all levels of society. It's just, it's just a bummer that that's, that's true even at the diet level. Like it's, people can't just accept food for food and you react to it. And, you know, if you want to try to lose weight, maybe, maybe eat less. Yeah. Like most religions have dietary restrictions. And I think if you break them in some religions, it's really bad. So mm-hmm. maybe oh, it's yeah. not a new thing. Maybe diet and tribalism have always gone together right it's a really good point yeah yeah like that's actually we're going pretty far back oh you know what that okay so on that note right because you've got like kosher you've got like different rules halal and all that stuff i okay so a perfect illustration that i was in the airport recently and um a couple were sitting at the next table over and i didn't know what was going on but but the woman stood up and she was furious and started yelling at at the at the server and asking for the manager and demanding the server get fired right there on the spot. And it was because based on her religious belief, I can't remember what it was. She was vegetarian. So I I think she was East Indian. I don't, I don't know exactly what the root religion was, but in her religion, you you, you don't eat meat. Really strictly. You don't eat meat. And her breakfast had, I think like sausage in it, maybe. And it was I, what she ordered. Obviously, she clearly in her mind ordered the vegetarian thing. Right. Yeah, and, which and happened to me. Yeah. You know, right. She must have ordered. There's no way she chose the thing with meat. This is her religion, right? Yeah. But the server, somewhere she figured it out that the wrong meal was del- She ate it. So clearly she couldn't even freaking tell it was in there. Right. And then afterwards was furious with this guy. Wanted his head, wanted, the, wanted him fired, wanted to talk to the manager. And I'm thinking, what? what just changed here? Like, you're not unhealthy. You're not going to die. Nothing's going to go wrong. But in her mind, she just betrayed her religion and all of this other tribal stuff. And it's all like mystical stuff. Nothing physically is wrong with her, right? Like she's fine. She's yeah, fine. So a cu- couple connected. of bites, couple of bites of meat aren't, aren't going to, aren't going to materially change her physically at all. Her husband's still going to love her. It's not like they're going to kick her out of the house. None of this stuff, right? But in her mind, all of this is in her own head. She's crossed a barrier. And not even knowingly. It was an accident, right? Like he didn't, she didn't know. She she right. didn't realize till after the fact. So even if it has something to do with your intention, she didn't intentionally betray her God or whatever the, the hell it is. But but it was, she was so furious afterwards. So to your point of obviously diet is intensely linked to religion which is intensely yeah. tribal because that's the major um confounder for the mediterranean diet studies right is that everybody looks at the food not realizing that crete that that island that like fasting was a massive part of that mm-hmm. group as well right and so 
or some people can have fish on certain days. Like it's, it's so, yeah, it's always maybe diets, one of the main drivers of tribalism or the main ways to identify an easy way to be like, Oh, you can't do that. If you're part of our group, but you have to do this and it's less dangerous, easy to do. Like it's, it's not a major inconvenience to your point, but so interesting. So maybe, maybe if you actually want to start a new tribe, it's, you got to start with the diet first as, as one of your things, right? See, it so. seems like to be a component. That's for sure. I don't yeah. know. Just do Scientologists have to eat a certain way? Maybe, he, maybe he left, question. maybe he left that part out. I bet you, I, I don't know, but I, I bet you there's diet restraints. Oh, now yeah, we have to find out that cause that yeah, would it'd be, be, it'd be that pretty, would be it'd be pretty ridiculous. Yeah. You know, if there was though, South Park would have already picked on it. I don't, maybe there isn't, I don't know. That's a good point. If it was because I mean, they managed, be they managed to call out everything that was ridiculous about that. So if there was some stupid diet restriction, they would have probably said something about it. But interesting. Anyway, right, so, so how, do we, how do we wrap this one up? So we know that diet is actually um, tribal by nature, but now we're thinking, holy cow, being tribal might always have some sort of diet component to it. That um, being an advocate or massive adherent to a diet doesn't guarantee you results. Um, that the diet, sometimes you lose track of why you started and you're stuck with a personality based around a diet when you're no longer even getting the results you started with. Um, is it just kind of uh, eat as pleases you and be quiet about it? Is that our, our basic idea here? Um, that was a good summary. I would say you got to get back to first principles. If you're going to intervene in the way you're eating, so you're not just letting society around you just dictate how you eat and you just eat like we discussed most of the time. if you're not paying attention, you'll just start eating like everyone around you. Yes. Oh, they're eating. I'll eat that. It's, it's five o'clock. Everyone else is eating in the house. I'll eat. And yeah. it's really and we all know the pressure of being the odd person out. Like, don't be the guy who eats first and then is sit there with no food in front of the girl on the date. Right. <laughs> Great story. So it's reasonable. It's reasonable that we it's uh, it's a societal lubricant to eat together. Like that's totally reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to intervene for the sake of changing your body, either the look, the shape, your overall health, you've got to have some objective measures of what I'm even attempting to change and understand any intervention you make. So you increase your protein, you decrease your carb, whatever it is that you're going to do. It, is it, is there a way to measure the effect and is it getting me there? First of all, first, right out of the gates, am I, am I even doing it? Just because you say you're going to do it, are you right. even doing it? If you can't even do it, it's probably, already, it's probably ridiculous. It's got to be something you can even do. Can you, can you reduce a bit of sugar? I don't know. Something simple. Can you even do it, right? First principles. Then from there, is it even getting you closer to your goal or not? And if it's not, you got to readjust. Right. And And I guess we can get into what how to even uh, approach your goals and how to even choose what the intervention might be. That's like a whole different, oh, yeah. that's a, that's a series of podcasts. But the point is your body's going to react no matter what uh, on the topic of, of um, adaptability, however you eat and exercise is how your body is going to look. So if you want to change your body, both of those things need to change. Yeah. And, and again, a clear goal, an idea of what the intervention might be and a way to measure it. And then without those things in place, uh, you're just fiddling around with ideology. You're trying for to fit no... in somewhere. Yeah. yeah. You're just trying to fit in. Yeah. All right. I think that's a good place to leave it for yeah. today. Nice. All right. All right. So for Brad Pilon, I'm John Barbin and that's your Fi Life podcast. <laughs>